Hello and welcome to WEEP instructional videos. My name is Stephanie and today we'll be learning to export and import data from Excel. This can be useful to document your expressions in WEEP in one place or to provide an easy way to edit data in Excel that you can then re-import into WEEP. Right now we're looking at the Guatapuri watershed in Colombia and I'm going to open up one of these catchments. So I clicked on it and we can see that there are several different land use types for this catchment. I'm in the land use button in the area tab. And let's open this up. And there's some data here about the different land use types and the kilometers that they occupy. Now, I could just look at this information in Excel. There are a bunch of icons here, and if you don't see the Excel icon, you can click this arrow at the bottom and that will show you whatever icons are missing. So I'm going to click the Excel button, and it opens up an Excel document. This document shows the data that's entered for the square kilometers of the different land use types. Now note that the data that will appear on these Excel documents are the results of the expressions, the values, much the same as show up in the table or the chart when you're looking at it in week. So here's the table, with the values, and the chart. But say that instead I wanted to export a lot of data, all of the data for the catchments, for instance, and I wanted to edit it and then re-import it back into Weep. This sheet we can't re-import, but if we go back to Weep and still in the Land Use button and the Area tab, we'll go into Edit and export expressions to Excel. Now, this window will pop up with several different questions. The first one that I'll look at is variables. The question is, do you want to export all variables or just area? Now, the reason that it's selected area here is because we're in the area tab. If we had been in the KC tab, it would have asked me specifically about KC. So one way to make this easy on yourself is to go into the exact data that you want to export. So I'm going to say, I just want to look at area. And now over here in branches, there's a question of current and below or all branches, which refers to the data tree. So if I said current and below, that would be only for TEM 2000 and all of these land use types. If I say all, it will export all of the data that's the same type, which is catchment. Then it asks a question, do I want this data for current accounts or for all, which would include all the years of the scenarios. Then it asks the question, do I want to export this data for current accounts or also for all the scenarios? I'll just say current accounts. And lastly, we have three questions over here. Do we want to export rows for blank expressions? I'm going to say yes, because if I want to add more data, then I'll need to have those blank rows available to write the data into. The next question is, do I want to export inherited expressions? This is more an issue when you're looking at expressions in scenarios that come from current accounts. I'll leave it checked for now. And lastly, there's a question of an auto filter in Excel. This is super helpful, and I would recommend always using it. Lastly, I have a question about whether I want to create a new workbook or a new worksheet in the workbook that I already have open. I'll say a new worksheet. This takes a minute, so I've cut out some of the time. Now, here we can see that we've exported all of our catchments. So here are all the different names. And then the same land use type for each one, and that was on purpose, that we had the same land use type, so that we could fill out the information about square kilometers based on output from GIS. Now, imagine that I had just redone the analysis in GIS and I had gotten different outputs for the different land use type for each catchment. It'd be really easy now to copy that from the attribute table and then paste it right in here. This is already in alphabetical order, as are the catchments based on their numerical elevation as well. So once I have that new data, I can change the existing data. So for example, right now, let's change the land use area of uh, DON 2500 
in bosks. Let's make it something crazy, like 30. And this other one, pastos, will say 7. Or if you have specific data you're looking for, you can also go up to the top and use the filters. Remember, we had that auto filter option. Say that I want to filter uh, which land use type I want to look at. That's a level 3. It's actually this filter over here. And you know that because when you click on the cell, that's the filter that shows up in the cell. So let's say that I only wanted to see bosks. I could open it up, deselect, select all, and then just say bosks. Okay? And that will show me all of the area for bosks that I have in my spreadsheet. And I can also go back and say select all. Now if we go back into Weep, I can say edit import expressions from Excel. It's going to ask me which sheet to import from, and it has a good idea. So it knows that this one is going to work with the Weep format, sheet 1, sheet 2. So we'll say yes here. And again, I cut out some of the waiting to make the video shorter. All right, so we imported all of those expressions and only two pieces of data were changed. Let's go in and check those. We said it was DON2500 using our control find that we showed last video. I'm gonna search DON2500, okay, and F3 to search it again. There we go. I bring it up and let's look at BOSCs. The value is now, let's go into land use and area. Here we go. The value is now 30 and pastos, the value is now 7. So you can imagine that if you had massive amounts of data to change, it might be easier to do it in Excel rather than going into each individual window within Weep. This has been a Weep instructional video. Good luck with your model.